Hi, and welcome back. I want to talk to you today about something that's really close to my heart, and I find it to be very, very important in my daily practice for being more fulfilled in life and happier. And I want to share it with you now. You know, Einstein said that there's two ways to live. One way is that nothing is a miracle, and that the other that everything is a miracle. When we look at the idea of practicing gratitude and thankfulness in our life, we find that the quality of our life improves immeasurably. Measurably. According to research from like Yale, from Harvard, from USC Davies, from Berkeley, and hundreds of other universities and research projects, they've discovered that people that practice gratitude and thankfulness on a daily basis have a better quality life overall. There was a large style study done years ago of 31,000 people, and that showed that over the course of their lifespan, their entire lives, the quality of their life improved measurably. So if it's been so useful for so many people in so many areas, I think it's something that's important to take seriously and think about implementing in your daily life. You see, gratitude helps us magnify the positive in our lives and diminish those negative things or negative emotions that we might be experiencing from time to time. I mean, yeah, sure, we all have anxiety, we all get angry, we all experience fear and things like this from time to time, but gratitude will help diminish that. And I don't know of any other practice, any other type of meditation or any other type of practice that is so efficient and so effective for so little effort. I mean, your return on investment is tremendous with the practice of gratitude. They've even found in large organizations where they've forced employees to practice gratitude in their daily uh, day that these people have reported over a week or two that actually the quality of their lives have improved. Now, I'm not advocating forcing anyone to do anything. I'm just saying it's an interesting piece of information that people that were basically required to practice gratitude actually received a benefit from it. So it's just kind of a food for thought. You see, when we feel gratitude, we learn to appreciate something and we're, that makes it that much less likely that will diminish its value over time. Did you know, for example, that your heart pumps over 100,000 times a day. Your lungs pump over 7,200 liters of oxygen per day for 24 hours. And your kidneys filter more than 1,609 liters of blood per day. And that's all for free. And we just take that kind of thing for granted. But if any one of those functions were to stop or be diminished, your health would suffer significantly. So there's just something really simple you can be grateful for and you don't even have to pay for it, it's free. Now, if you think of all the wonderful things you have in your life to be grateful for, maybe you have a great job, or maybe you don't have a great job, but you have people who love you and loved ones. There's people that don't even have those two. Or maybe you have your health, or maybe you don't have your health, but you have a job you enjoy doing. Or maybe you don't have a job, you don't have your health, but you have people that love you. See, you can always find something to be grateful for. Or maybe the fact that you don't have your health at the moment gives you an opportunity to do other activities, maybe like reading or studying or reflect and think and things like this. So we can always find a benefit in a negative event. I myself was quite seriously ill on two occasions. Once I was ill to the point of death in Italy many years ago, and it really, really changed my perspective on how I look at life. And the second time I was involved in an accident, and the same thing I, uh, according to the doctors, I could have died very, very, was very close to death. And the same thing, I was able to recover. Now those two experiences in my life, I wouldn't want other people to have to go through that. But for me, it was a huge benefit because it helped me learn to be more appreciative of life and take things, um, well, the, the negative things more lightly and be appreciative of the good things in my life day by day. So how about gratitude and thankfulness in the workplace? Well, they show us that leaders who are grateful inspire others. They energize the other employees, they motivate the other employees, and not only that, employees have been shown to go from the mindset of I should do this to I want to do this. It also improves self-esteem and self-confidence. How about gratefulness and mental health? Well, they took a group of soldiers who came back from war who were suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, and they found that by them practicing a daily practice of gratitude, not only did their trauma diminish, their suspicions diminish, paranoias diminished, the stress diminished, anxiety diminished, and again their self-esteem built as a result of this practice. Not only that, but by practicing gratitude it increases your levels of oxytocin, serotonin, and dopamine. All this 
by practicing gratitude. These studies were realized and conducted by the University of Wharton Medical School and have several other institutions have repeated the same experiment and have had the same results. So again, for just a few minutes of journaling every day and you get so much benefit, I, would, I don't understand why anybody wouldn't take this to heart and at least try it for a few weeks and how it works for them. How about gratitude and health? Well, they found that professional athletes who practiced gratitude at, I believe it was UC Berkeley, were able to win more championships than those that did not. Now that's an interesting fact. Also, people's health tends to be better when we go about practicing gratitude. I've seen two cases in my life personally where I've seen people develop cancer literally spontaneously based on them having and suffering from negative emotions. I've spoken to many doctors who have experienced the same thing with patients who just suddenly become ill with severe diseases like cancer and also some of these people recover very very quickly as well just by changing their mindset and their emotional state. Now I'm not just saying that's the only solution if you're ill with something serious but it is a factor that does help improve your health, improves your mental state, improves your overall satisfaction fulfillment in life so I think it's worth something to look at seriously. How about gratitude in relationships? Well, people who feel appreciating a relationship tend to be much more satisfied in that relationship. And as I said previously, Wharton Medical School conducted research and found that it increases oxytocin levels, increases dopamine, and serotonin levels, all the feel-good chemicals in your brain. So how can you make your partner feel appreciated and more grateful? Well, maybe just doing simple things like leaving the toilet lid down or making them a cup of coffee or taking out the garbage, doing the dishes or any type of unexpected act of kindness that they're not expecting are all kinds of things that will make the partner feel more appreciated. And you know what happens as a result of this is they will tend to repeat likewise. The, lo the law of reciprocation will kick in and they will also treat you better if you're involved in a healthy relationship that is, of course. The famous psychologist Robert Edmond who's probably done more research on gratitude than anyone else, says the following. Gratitude is the affirmation of a good thing in one person's life and a recognition that good thing lies particularly outside yourself. When we acknowledge receiving a valuable benefit from another person, gratitude, this helps regulate the relationship. It helps build trust and social bonds it demonstrates that we're a good partner and not just some kind of like freeloader. And also it acts as a positive reinforcement so that that person continues that behavior in the future. So how can you begin practicing gratitude in your daily life? Well, the most common, probably the most well-known is journaling, where you just write down things that you're grateful for today. And over time, you'll come to realize that you have all these things to be grateful for and there's only just a few things that are just annoyances. So, for example, in a given day, maybe your boss yelled at you or some jerk cut you off in traffic or maybe the clerk at the store was rude to you. And sometimes as a human beings, we'll take these sorts of negative experiences and we'll blow them up out of proportion and make them really, really a big deal. But we forget to focus on all the wonderful things that we have in our life that we take for granted. And if we didn't take these for granted and we focus on these, we're going to feel better rather than focusing on the negative, which makes us feel kind of crappy. So I think you kind of get what I'm going at. Another thing you could do is perhaps meditate on gra gratitude. Meditation gratitude, such as a mindfulness meditation, but instead of mindfulness on the body parts, focus on gratitude. Another idea would be prayer. If we look at the three major religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, they all have practices of gratitude within their structures. Meaning the Jewish prayer in the morning, it's called the Birak uh, Hashachar, <laughs> that they involve giving thanks for all the things that they need to be grateful for. The Islam has the Shukri, which is also a gratitude sort of prayer where they go about focusing on all the things they have to be great, grateful for, good and bad, just like the Christians as well. They give thanks for the positive elements in their life and negative. And a lot of times the things that we interpret as negative, there's actually a silver lining inside them. We just need to look for what is the benefit that we're going to get from this experience. I mean, if you had no problems in life, and I've said this before, 
you probably would get pretty bored. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, I'd love to have a life with no problems. But I tell you what, after a period of time, having no problems in your life, life becomes boring. I'm not talking about huge, nasty problems, but little challenges that we have in our life from day to day. Those are kind of like gifts that kind of help us grow and those challenges make us better people and make us who we are. Another thing you could do is put up visual reminders on the walls, maybe post-its around your computer to remind you or, or places you frequent so it reminds you to smile and be grateful for the things that you have in your life. The last thought I'd like to share with you and leave with you is be careful what you speak about and what kind of people you associate with. I mean, if you're speaking negatively and gossiping about people, you're focusing on the negative and that's, that's the opposite of gratitude. So we want to avoid that kind of behavior of gossiping and talking neg negatively. Now I get it that sometimes people build bonds with other people by gossiping and speaking bad about that group because we're better and all this kind of thing. But actually what that is, that's really just building a toxic relationship or a toxic uh, circle of influence or social circle of toxicity and long term it's not beneficial plus people who tend to gossip and speak bad about other people will eventually speak bad about you not only that I teach in my coaching classes that when you speak negatively about another person you know what happens those negative emotions spoken about that other person are associated with you and that's not something you want if you want to be influential if you want to be a leader if you want to be persuasive with other people. So just keep that in mind. Avoid the ne negative small talk and all that sort of thing and focus on the positive and the things we have to be grateful for. Because believe me, there's many more things to be grateful for than there are to be sad about or negative about and so forth. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have time, check out our Think of It courses. We have three. One on body, la body language basics. The second one is on sales psychology, which is a pretty awesome one. And the third one is on persuasion and influence. Again, thanks for watching. I'd like to hear your comments, so leave us a comment below. Give us a like if you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe and have a wonderful day. And as always, success today, tomorrow, and for the rest of your life. Have a fantastic one. Thanks.